Let's talk about the basic concept we call beam bending. Imagine a simply supported beam with a concentrated load acting directly in the middle. As this load increases, we will have a special case called positive bending. And by convention, positive bending means we will have a deflected shape that's concave up. And most importantly, with respect to something we call a neutral axis, which is the centroidal neutral axis acting at the centroid of the cross section, we will have compressive stresses in the top fibers above the neutral axis and tensile tension stresses in the bottom fiber below the neutral axis. Now for this positive bending case, let's make a section cut directly through the middle of the beam to examine the stresses developed due to bending or in other words, due to a bending moment. Examining this rectangular cross section, we will first denote the neutral axis. Keep in mind, in this case, we're dealing with a simple case that's a rectangular cross section, and the centroid is going to act directly in the middle. Therefore, the neutral axis will act at the centroid of the cross section. Therefore, if we have the T beam and I beam, as that centroid changes, the neutral axis will also change. Denoting that neutral axis, now we can visualize the stresses. We said above the neutral axis, we will have compressive stresses for positive bending. And these will be zero at the neutral axis, and they're maximized at the very top extreme compression fiber. Now for the tensile stresses, they will be zero at the neutral axis as well, and they're maximized at the very bottom tensile fiber. We can calculate these bending stresses using this very handy formula found in the handbook. The formula says the bending stress developed is going to equal to the moment at any section. And in this particular case, we're looking at the middle section where the maximum moment occurs. We multiply that by the Y value. This is the distance from the neutral axis to any fiber location. No, you have to start at the neutral axis. Then we divide this by the I value, which is the moment of inertia of the cross section. Now, if we want to determine the maximum compressive stresses developed, we will take the maximum moment that occurs at the middle section. And this can be determined using an FE handbook table found in mechanics and materials. We will multiply this by the Y value but since we're finding the compressive stresses, we have to start at the neutral axis, travel all the way to the top, to the extreme compression fiber. Then we take this divided by the I value, which is the moment of inertia about the XX axis using the FE handbook tables. The same applies for tension. If we want to find the maximum tensile stresses, we will take the maximum moment developed at the section we cut, which is the maximum moment that gives us the worst case scenario. We multiply this by the Y value starting from the neutral axis and traveling down to the very bottom tension fiber. And then we divide all of this by the I value, which is the moment of inertia about the XX axis using the FE handbook table. Now, what if we have negative bending? The same exact logic will still apply with one exception. The deflected shape will be concave down. And with respect to that very important neutral axis, we will have tensile stresses developed above the neutral axis and compressive compression stresses developed below the neutral axis. Just like what we did before, we can make a section cut directly through the middle where the maximum negative bending moment occurs. And visualizing the stresses developed due to negative bending or negative bending moment, we will have the same neutral axis that occurs at the centroid of the cross section. And directly above that neutral axis, we will have the tensile stresses. They're going to be zero at the neutral axis and they're gonna be maximized at the very top tensile fiber. Now, when we look at the compressive stresses, they're going to be zero at the neutral axis and they're maximized as we go below to the very bottom compressive fiber. These stresses are calculated using that same formula 
where the M value is the moment at any section. In this case, we're dealing with the worst case scenario where the maximum negative bending moment occurs directly in the middle. The Y value is the distance from the neutral axis to any fiber location. Therefore, the Y value for the maximum tensile compressive stresses will start at the neutral axis and it's going to go all the way to the top to the tensile fiber. And then the Y value for the maximum compressive stresses will start at the neutral axis and then we go directly below to the very bottom compressive fiber. And then we take both of these divided by the I value. This is the moment of inertia of the cross section. And in this case, this is determined and can be found in the handbook. Note, this is the moment of inertia about the axis that bending occurs about.